Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kristen and I'm so excited that you're here. I make videos to encourage you, empower you to be more and not less in this world, and most importantly to have fun because this beautiful life is meant to be enjoyed. Everybody has their doubts, but you can't stop now. You just, you just gotta live. So, today's topic is five biblical truths about singleness. Because I think when we are in a season of singleness, whether we're thriving or struggling, we hear a lot of cliches and advice like, oh, you know, you're meant to be single. God has you being single. You know, some people just aren't meant to be married. And while they may be true, while they may be good, it still is hard to put into practice. Like, what do we actually do with those? You know, as someone who's been single for a while, I'm like, what do I actually do with those? And so today I want to bring biblical truth about the topic of singleness so that it's easier to put into practice. We can change our perspective and it's more practical. And I think these will help us change the way we view singleness, the way we live in singleness, because I think this is a really unique opportunity opportunity here. So let's jump right in. The first thing is it's okay to desire marriage. I think so often people kind of shame single girls saying, you know, oh, like you should just be happy in this season or whatever the case may be. And like, or that you shouldn't, you know, desire marriage. And that's not the case at all. Like it is okay. It is biblical. It is good to desire marriage because God created marriage. Even in Genesis 2 18, God says, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. He designed marriage. He created marriage. It's a good thing. And it's okay to desire marriage. And the only thing is you have to make sure it doesn't become an idol. So we can desire marriage, we can desire a husband, but if he becomes our idol, then we do get into a relationship, it's going to be unhealthy because we are focusing on putting like all of our, you know, everything into our husband. Number two is that marriage is not the only way to multiply and fill the earth. If we look in Genesis 1, 28, it says, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. And we hear this first and we think, okay, immediately our thoughts go to the only way to multiply and fill the earth is to have babies, which if you're a Christian, we value, you know, having children within a marriage. And that is so true. Marriage is a great opportunity to put your resources together, to go out and, you know, multiply and to have children to multiply and be fruitful, but it's not the only way. So if you're single and you're thinking, man, like I can't multiply and fill the earth, you are wrong. There are so many other ways, for example, making disciples as Jesus tells us in Great Commission in Matthew 28. It can be mentoring people, serving at your church. Any activity you go to, you can go with the heart of Jesus to spread his hope and share his love with people and that can multiply and fill the earth without even being married, without even having children. The third is that singleness is useful and purposeful because you can be wholly and fully devoted to the Lord in a way that you cannot be in marriage. Paul talks about that in his singleness in 1 Corinthians 7, 34. It says, and his interests are divided, talking about a married man. An unmarried woman is concerned about the Lord's affairs. Her aim is to be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit. But a married woman is concerned about the affairs of this world, how she can please her husband. So right there, Paul is saying the beauty and the joy and the purpose that can be found in being single that you cannot get when you are married. Now he goes on to say like, it is okay to be married. He's not saying that singleness is better than marriage. It's like marriage is not better than singleness. But singleness, it can be so useful because you are fully devoted to the Lord and your aim is just to spend time and to please the Lord. Imagine if Paul had been tied down he would not have furthered the kingdom of God or risked his life like he did to, you know, release God's kingdom and further Christianity the way he did if he was married. Now, I'm not saying that if you're married that you can't go out and spread the gospel and share and all of that. Like, you can. Marriage is a beautiful opportunity to put resources of time, energy, and money together to go out and serve God's kingdom and release his kingdom. And that is amazing. But it's still not the same as when you're single because when you are married, you have another person that you are also aiming to look out for. But when you are single, man, you were able to be fully devoted to the Lord, just running after him to build his kingdom and be a servant of God like you can't when you are married. 
The fourth one is to put your focus entirely on God. This kind of goes with and follows number three, but this is a time in your life you will never get back to be fully devoted to the Lord, to put your full focus on serving Him, on being in His Word, on praying, on participating in the mission of God. I want us to catch this, that like I said, it's okay to desire marriage, but while we are single, don't be looking and wishing and putting all your focus on when that season is going to come, when that, you know, time of your life is going to come because then we're going to miss the fact that the opportunity that we have here being single just put our entire focus our entire efforts our entire energy after you know, seeking him more developing a deeper relationship with him and just going after his kingdom john 15 verses 4 through 8 says remain in me as i also remain in you no branch can bear fruit by itself it must remain in the vine neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. This goes back to point number two. To be fruitful just means to bear fruit. And Jesus tells us right there, married or single, no matter who we are, the only way we can bear fruit is if we remain in God and he is our root and he is our vine. And I think that's a beautiful reminder of what to focus on in this season of singleness, as well as the famous Proverbs 31:30 verse that says, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. In this season, I just hope and pray for all of us single ladies out there that we would just dive deeply into the Lord and to be a woman who fears the Lord. I really encourage you to just Focus and kind of meditate on that verse to remind yourself that in this season of singleness, you are preparing yourself to be a woman who fears the Lord. And then the fifth and final biblical truth is to be present in this season. There is a season for everything, as Ecclesiastes 3 tells us. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. And then it goes on a time to do this and that all the way down and it's so important. I know that, that might be cliche, but I want to dive deeper into the biblical truth of realizing that like, this season you're in has a purpose and be present in it so that you can just soak up every opportunity that you have. Wishing for another person's season or a past or future season is not going to help you grow in this season or in your future. And think of it like a plant. I know people use this analogy, but each plant has its own season and it doesn't grow by wishing it was either farther along or wishing it was another plant season, it grows by doing everything it can in the season that it has to do what it was created for. And I think that is a beautiful picture for us that to be fully rooted and present in this season so that we can soak up every opportunity to be who God created us to be and do what God created us to do. And there is a reason and a purpose for this season. And it might be because God wants to use you in a certain way. Acts 21 9 says he had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. Now this is not saying obviously that um, if you're married you can't prophesy but it's showing that in this season of being unmarried and single like God had a purpose for them. He, it was to advance his kingdom and it was to for them to be present. If they were worried about like oh, we're not married like all of our friends they would missed out on the fact that they got the blessing and the gift of God to prophesy so important we be present in this season because we might miss if we're busy looking at next season and the growth that we want to have we are not preparing ourselves and being present in this season so those are the five biblical truths about singleness that i have for you and just kind of some final thoughts to wrap this up i just want to give this question for you to meditate on and think over as you go about your week and your life what if you were in this season for a reason and what if you can't get to a future season that you want that is so amazing for you without going through this season first. I think God is using, in fact, I know God is using you and this season if we would surrender it to him to prepare you for that season, but you have to go through this one first. And of course, remember that your value, your worth and your identity do not come from your relationship status. You are a beautiful daughter of the king. You are loved. You are worthy just as you are. That doesn't change just because you're single or just because you get into a relationship. 
So be present, soak up this season and this unique opportunity you have to be fruitful, to pursue God with all of your heart, time, and energy. And just know that God is doing something beautiful in this season so that he can do something even more beautiful in the next season. You just, you just gotta live.